Hi everybody, welcome to another career tutorial. I'm Cripeman. What we're going to do this time through is we're going to look at a couple of cool little things that career, career can do right out of the box. Uh, uh, we're going to kind of mess with the filters and effects a little bit. Uh, the three that we're going to mess with today are glare, blur, and 3D aura. Uh, not necessarily in that order. And uh, our test subject is going to be the girl. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do. Uh, first of all, let's click on the top hierarchy of the model. And you notice that if you look up here at when you do that, you look up here, there's only three different tabs. If you click on the model itself, now you have five tabs. Click on the far right one, the effects tab, and let's jump into blur. Auto update. And you notice that if you crank this up and down, nothing's going to happen. Enable it, and then you get a little bit of a blur. And uh, you can kind of crank the radius around a little bit, but this particular effect, well, actually, in all the effects I'm going to show you, less is less is more. It's going to uh, you want it to kind of ac accentuate your image uh, rather than overtake it, unless that's what you want. You want to you want it to overtake your image. You can do that even at 100 percent. But really, what's the point of using a model <laughs> if you're going to do that? You can't even see it. But you notice that when you do crank it up to 100 percent, the only thing that got blurred was the model everything that's part of the girl got blurred the hair didn't get blurred even though it's parented to the object or a parented object so uh, yeah you got different different things you can do here crank the radius around do the drop off uh, crank the quality up and down low quality is really low quality uh, but you can get some decent effects even at real low settings check this out I'm crank it up to 10 you know once you get it up to 10 the model is just barely recognizable but uh, you notice it did blur around here and didn't blur around the hair that's kind of a cool thing so that's your blur uh, now you have let's go to your 3d aura or aura they're both the same thing if you go to your if you if you're in your model and you click on aura uh, you're gonna get the same effect as if you do this other thing I'm gonna show you but let's go ahead and enable the aura and check this out there you go the intensity kind of takes a while to calculate do a little bit of that and see so you can get some really cool effects with this uh, a little caveat about it though uh, aura doesn't work on alpha mapped images if you if you're trying to do an alpha map uh, like like an alpha map of fire uh, it's not going to glow around the fire. It's going to grow around the glow around the plane that it's been assigned to. Uh, yeah, it's going to glow around the edges of it. So it's not good for that, and it's also not good for fire of all things. Even though fire has a even though fire has a little uh, has a shader, uh, it you can't affect the uh, you can't affect it with this. Oh this is the default texture for the girl but trust me it doesn't work on fire and it really should um, yeah there's that and uh, but don't let it don't don't uh, let it dissuade you from using it I mean it's very cool if if uh, used correctly where'd I go model effects aura um, use use in small amounts it'll it'll make your image look ethereal uh, give it a little bit of a glow uh, which is another thing about this uh, this particular effect right here works when there is an uh, there is there we go when there's something in the glow channel you have to have just a little bit even at the even at smaller increments um, not maybe not that small but even at smaller increments you can still get a nice little glow effect or glare not glow uh, 3d aura effect out of your glow and you notice how I don't know if you can see this but once you get closer to the image there's a little bit of a pink haze around there that's the aura that I just put on you crank it up a little bit and it's going to draw your render times up it's another good reason to use uh, smaller settings but crank this up if you use if you use everything everything together right you'll get some really cool effects see that I, all I did was crank up the glow and it brought the glow up 
here. So uh, use them use them in conjunction with each other, and they will give you they will make your images look awesome. Crank this back down a little bit, and go over here again. And I can show you a couple other things. Uh, you can crank up your intensity here. Oh, you can crank up your intensity, and it's going to bring your render times up. Same thing with your radius, and especially if you have distance attenuation, which if you use this effect, it's really going to help make it look good. Uh, throw a little turbulence in there, uh, but but halfway down, uh, use it at halfway. Turbulent if at 100%, your turbulence really looks blocky and gross, but uh, down here it looks it starts to look better as you crank it down, and you can drag your lumpiness around and. There's that. Let's disable this and let's go into our scene and go into filters and do a drop down. Your 3D aura is the exact same thing. But it's not the exact same one. So if you wanted to have if you wanted to double up on your glow, which you which you can, but the effect uh, the, I haven't seen a good effect. I, I haven't been able to create a good effect with it. But uh yeah, if you uh uh throw a little glow 3 3D aura here and then aura in your model um, you can wind up getting a couple of different colors represented uh, in your image and you notice how I crank the settings up a little bit and the render the render just takes a long time your the higher the higher your values the uh, 72 yeah that's going to send it up there a little bit intensity bring that down bring the radius up about 50 it's still gonna still gonna be a little bit of a render time on it and this is at this is at no anti-aliasing and uh, four pix four pixel accuracy on both of my other settings shadow and object and see how long it's taken to go we'll go ahead and let it finish rendering out just so we can kind of see the effect but I'm running a two core I'm running a two core system uh, two processor system so um, yeah, that's that's how slow it goes with two cores. Four cores is going to be faster. One core is going to be slower. Tick, 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 tick. I didn't think it was going to take this long. Now I got to let it finish. But you see how it just a little bit of glow happened around here, and this is without any aliasing. It would look a lot better with any aliasing and distance attenuation. Uh, that's 3D Aura. Now this one right here, at, and uh, just as a reminder, 3D Aura works with your glow channel. Let's go ahead and do glare. Glare works in your shader channels too, uh, but it goes by uh, it goes off of your highlight. Let's go ahead and check this out. And the same as your same as your uh, 3D Aura, uh, cranking your highlight around a little bit will help increase and decrease the effect of your of, of your effect. Uh, there we go. Now you notice that uh, when the effect is rendered you can't really tell that there was a difference but if you crank these up a little bit all your highlights, all the white areas in your highlights get a little bit of a smudge uh, coming outwards from them your height, uh, according to your height and the width. Now you might want that effect but you notice that you notice how, how small the how small the values are here uh, yeah you don't need a whole lot for the glare to give an effect and it kinda gives a the effect of uh, maybe a gel on over your camera lens or something Let's see if we can do this real quick before a little bit of glare pow you see what it does to it, it kinda gives it that Tron that new Tron movie look you know if you want that but you can that's a that's at a very low setting. If you bring the bring the setting down even less or more, bring it down more so that you can have less of an effect, and it just slightly brings a glare out. It, it it's a very cool effect. You you can play with it all day and get something different every time you you use it. Um, let's go and bring the intensity up a little bit, and check this out. Go to glint. Maybe I better do this. 
uh, glint is ellipse is a circular is a circular glare and uh, glint just kind of tightens some of these uh, edge edges in I guess it is uh, you can't really tell a whole lot of a difference uh, right here but there is a little there it shows it shows more of a distance when you render uh, you got glint you got absolute it's going to crank up the whole process a little more and uh, difference which is going to it's that's a little bit brighter than white see that these two guys right here will crank it up a little bit you can also do the um, you can also do a color for your glare if you want and that's going to kind of look not that great but uh, you see how it kind of gives her softer tones it looks like there might be a fire on the other side you know that's reflecting off of her skin uh, you know there's there's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of different things you can do you can mix, mix and match these effects Kapow, 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 and kapow. Mix and match the effects, and uh, really look like that you've did a lot of work to your image. See how that? See that? So anyway, uh, check it out. These are that's just three of your uh, effects that you can play with in Carrera. Uh, don't be shy to don't be shy. Mix, match them, uh, do some very cool things with them. Uh, because that's what they're there for. So anyway, that's it for this time. I'm Cripe Man, and I'll talk to you again later. Bye.